Hey guys, welcome back. So we are switching to quant today in our webinars. We'll discuss how to use approximations to our advantage. Yeah. Uh, look, there are some questions which are made for approximation. I mean, it's obvious that you have to approximate in those and then get the answer because in case you actually get down to doing the actual calculation, it'll take you forever without the use of a calculator. Of course, now we don't have it in quant in GMAT. So um, there are some questions which are not made for um, approximation. There is a, you know, a good theoretical method to solve them. There is a nice holistic method to solve them and everything. But um, what happens if it doesn't strike us? And you know, we have just two minutes to solve the question. And in case like in the first 30 seconds or 45 seconds, we still don't know how to start, what to do, etc then in some cases we can approximate and get the answer, you know, normally to 100% surety. So our focus for today's webinar is going to be more of those kind of questions. Though we'll take a look at, you know, one question where, uh, which is pretty much made for approximation as well. Yeah? Uh, now, what are the markers of a question that is made for approximation? Like, as in, how do we know that we have to use approximation over here or we can use it? Um, one is, of course, you know, in the question stem, you will see closest to. So the answer is closest to which of the following options. That shows that you're not really looking for an exact answer. Some kind of approximation will work. Yeah. Then another marker is that the options are going to be a little far apart. They're not going to be very close. So that is why you can, like, you know, you'll have 50, 60, 70, 80, for example. And then perhaps with approximations, you will get something like 57 or 58. So you know that you're looking at 60 as the answer that way. And then another thing that tells you that the question does, uh, you know, you could use approximation is that the question would be quite, or at least it will look quite calculation intensive. Now, what do I mean by that? Something which, you know, which obviously involves a lot of calculation where you see that um, you can't really get down to doing the actual calculation because that will take forever. Like, for example, I usually tell my students that multiplying a two-digit number by a two-digit number is too much of a calculation for GMAT questions, right? So something, if you see that this is what you require to do, then it means that the question was pretty much made for approximation. So what do I mean by that? I'll just let me share my screen and I'll tell you um, that uh, just here. I'll tell you what kind of a questions I'm talking about when I say that. Yeah? yeah. All right. So let's say when I say that the question has you know, a lot of calculation you can see and then you should approximate. So say in case I see something like, say 9.2 into 1001 divided by, say 49 into 2, okay? So, of course, and I need the answer to that. You know, it's not going to be a very difficult question in GMAT, obviously, it doesn't matter. But I want the answer to that. So, of course, I see that, okay, doing this calculation is going to take a lot of time. So I have to approximate. Now, the first thing that might come to my mind is, all right, let's make this 10, this is 9.2, so close enough to 10. Of course, this we can make 1,000. So if we get 10,000 in the numerator. And then here we have 492, uh, which is 98, so it is very close to 100. So let's make this 100. So then we are left with a 100 over here, okay? But then keep in mind, that the options will not be such that, uh, you know, you have a 50 and a 100 and a 200. They won't be like that. Yeah? You will need to be a little more smart in your approximation. So say options could be 94, 100, 102. Yeah? So then we say that you need to be mindful about your approximation. That is, am I increasing the numbers? Am I uh, or am I decreasing the numbers? So overall, what is the impact on the resultant? So I should say essentially that my answer would be, let's say less than 100 or more than 100. I should be able to say that. And I should have a sense of, let's say maybe, you know, how much more than 100 or how much less than 100. Okay, so now what do I mean by that? Look, when I say that 9.2 is approximately equal to 10, there is a big approximation involved over here. Even though I have increased this only by a point eight, if I look at it in absolute terms, and this I have reduced by a one, 
from 1001, it has gone to thousands. I've reduced that by a one, right? So then um, does it cancel off each other? And, you know, I increased one number by 0.8 and I decreased the other one by one. So essentially, does that mean that the, it should cancel out each other and 9.2 into 1001 should essentially be very close to 10,000? But that's not the case. Why? Because 0.8 is a big, percentage of this number 9.2 yeah it's a little more than eight percent of 9.2 so i am increasing this by eight percent and here this one i'm reducing 1001 by one this one is a very small it's a 0.1 percent of 1000 right um so i mean just very slightly less than 0.1 percent so it's approximately i'm reducing this by a 0.1 percent and I am increasing this by an 8%. So do you see, while proximating, I have made it really huge, right? I've proximated this a little too much, right? I've increased it by 8%. I don't know if you remember, you know, if you've gone through the percentages, uh, topics, etc. When I increase a number, let's say 9.2, if I increase it by 8%, I'm essentially multiplying it by 108 by 100, right? If I want that the impact of this should not be there, as in essentially my approximation shouldn't lead to much of a difference from the result and from the actual answer, I should multiply this by 100 by 108, right? So then these two effectively cancel off and I'm left with a 9.2 into 1001. But then this is almost, I mean, a little less than 8%. I'm reducing 1001 by a little less than 8%. Right? But actually, I'm reducing it only by a 0.1%. So that is why it hasn't really made up for the increase that I have seen in 9.2 by increasing it by 8%. Right? So absolute amount of increase is not important. What is important it by what is by what percent I have increased a certain number. 0.8 is a big part of 9.2, but a 1 is a very small part of 1001. Right? So keep that in mind. All right. So then if I have to approximate, first of all, I will approximate this as a 1000. That is fine. But I leave this as it is. This is a very little decrease, right? So I'll say, okay, this is then 9200. I'm saying this is 9.2 into 1000. That is how I'll approximate it divided by this is 49 into 2 is 98 now i have written this as 100 i have increased the denominator by a small amount almost two percent i mean about two percent it's a little more than two percent doesn't matter right because 98 has gone up by two so uh, it's a little more than two percent of it so it doesn't matter i have increased my denominator by a two percent and if I increase my denominator, my overall result becomes smaller, right? When my denominator is smaller, my overall result is greater. And when I increase my denominator, my overall result becomes smaller. Which means that the result that I'll, the actual answer, even though here I'm getting a 92, the actual answer will be a little bit more than 92. Yeah. So, you know, here I have kind of increased it by 2%, right? In case I would have increased this by 2% as well, then it wouldn't have had any impact. My answer would be almost my actual answer. So I would say that this, in effect, would be somewhere close to 94. So then I know that my answer here is 94. It is going to be 94. Yeah, not 100, not 102. I know that my answer will be less than 100 and it will be a little bit more than 92. So, you know, the 94 would be my answer. Yeah. So, I mean, approximation is great, but then it has to be a smart approximation. You have to keep these things in mind. You do need to know the number properties really well. Now, we'll discuss quite a few questions. You will see the advantage of using approximation, which is huge. So then having your basics clear of a few topics, and I'll just tell you which topics they are. It's not a bad idea, of course. You know, anyway, you need to be very comfortable with those topics. So let me tell you which topics there are. And, you know, with, and you need to be comfortable with those topics. So first of all, percentages. 
let's say to have this sense of okay i'm increasing this number by this percent let's say what is how do i find 10 percent of a number how do i find one percent of a number i have to find six percent of a number how how do i do that right i have a youtube video also of that a short one but yeah so how do i do that very quickly so finding percentages then also uh, knowing the fraction let's say knowing the fraction uh, decimal equivalence this is going to be important too so for example if i have a half what is this it is actually a 0. 0.5 yeah if i have let's say a 1 by 11 you know in percentages we have discussed this that 1 by 2 is a 50 percent for example 1 by 11 is a 9.09 percent right so then in case i'm talking about a decimal then this is going to be a 0 0.09 right then uh, let's say you know one by four i know this has to be a 0.25 then one by eight it has to be a 0.125 so these fraction decimal equivalents also i should be fairly comfortable with as i said if you remember the percentages then you, you're just dividing the thing by 100 to get the decimal so it is exactly the same thing if you remember the percent fraction percent equivalence it's just the same thing right this in decimal you're just dividing that by 100 all right now um what else yeah so another thing you should know yeah square roots and exponents so square roots and exponents all right what do i mean by square roots of course you should know what is root 2 yeah since we are approximating we'll use 1.4 we'll not use 1.414 then you should know root 3, that is 1.7. These two are the ones that you should know by heart. Then others you should be able to guess. Like for example, if I have a root 5, I know that root 4 is 2. So this is going to be root 5 is going to be 2 point something, 2 point a little bit 1 or 2, etc. Because 5 is very close to 4. So it will just be a little bit more. Yeah. Then uh, let's say if I have a root 10, I know that root 9 is 3, so root 10 will be just a little bit more. So maybe 3.1, 3.1 .3 3 perhaps, right? That brings me to my next point that I should also know number properties really well. Now, these are the things that you should know instinctively, right? Um, you know, you, you can't really, I mean, it's fine, learn it up. But then you need to have enough practice to know these things instinctively. So when I say number properties, for example, what I mean is that I need to know what is the graph of root x. So root x would look something like this. Yeah, It will increase a little rapidly, somewhat in the beginning, but then the increase will become lower and lower, right? Look at that. It is... It is a little steep in the beginning and then it is slow. So then, you know, every time, let's say, you know, when you have the, the value will increase by a smaller and smaller amount. So if I just look at this root 2 is 1.4, root 3 is 1.7, then you have root 4, which is equal to 2. Your root 5 will be some 2 point, you know, 2 or something like that about that, right? So now, do you see that the increase, and this is 4, 1, 4, and this is 7, 3, 2, actually speaking. So do you see that here the increase was, you know, it's, it's decreasing. It's not increasing by as much. Here, from 0.414 to 0.732, there is an increase. From 0.732 to 2, increase is a little less. Now, from 2 to 2.2, the increase is even less. Now, it's increasing by smaller and smaller amounts. So that sense of numbers, you know, you should have, right? You should be comfortable with. On the flip side, let's say you should know that this is what the graph of x square will look like. It'll in Initially, it will increase slowly and then it will start increasing rapidly, which means that, let's say, difference between 4 square and 5 square will be something difference between 5 square and 6 square will be more than that and difference between 6 square and 7 square will be even more than that right again you need to have a sense of these things that this is a you don't really need to know how the graph what the graph looks like but at least a sense of this is how the numbers are yeah then again 
For example, it is a good idea to know how the exponents are placed, like exponents are squares and cubes and fourth power and fifth power, etc. How are the exponents placed on the number line? So for example, I have a zero over here. I have two to the power zero here. I have two to the power one here. My two to the power two is going to be, you know, whatever the distance over here is, it will be the same. The next power is going to be at the same distance. Why? Because look, this is one, this is two, and this is four now. So the distance over here is also two, right? Now, next comes my two to the power three. It will be much farther. Whatever is this distance, it will be exactly this distance for to the next power. Why? Because look at this. This is my eight, right? So this from zero to two to the power two is four. And then from two to the power two to two point two to the power three is another four. So it is the same distance, right? So again, how the numbers are related to each other, how the exponents are related to each other. These are some basic things that you need to be comfortable with. As I said, the questions which are going to be, you know, we'll be able to do through using approximations. Um, they will, they will not be like very straightforward. You'll need to use some smart approximations. So then knowing these things will help you uh, uh, quite uh, a lot. Okay. Have I left anything? Yeah. So one more point, multiplication tables. But anyway, you know, that you know that you need to know for calculation. So you should know multiplication tables really well as much as possible. Of course, still 12 is a must. 12 into 10. And then if you know the tables of 13, 14, 15, 16, all that, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah? The more tables you know, more you can approximate, more quickly you can answer. And we know that quant is about time as well. So, so that is one. Uh, let me just write it down as well. So last thing is your multiplication tables. Yeah. All right. Now, these are the basic things that you need to know for approximations. Now, we'll see how to use them on actual questions, right? So, our first question is going to be something that is pretty much made to approximate. That is how we are going to solve it. Then the other questions, um, you know, we'll, we'll have a regular method also, but we'll also look at the approximation Okay, if x is a number such that so and so something something and I I don't know whatever yeah this this seems I mean, quite difficult I mean for once when I read for the first time I would like kind of ignore it and see what the question is asking because it's you know two with two inequalities that really don't know how to handle this all right which of the following is closest to the value of this then now this again look at this you know there's a root ten in the denominator and minus one upon x you know these are not things that these are not the kind of calculations that we do. Right? Normally, I would say even by hand, we wouldn't be doing these kind of calculations. Even if we have a calculator, this is more like what programming would be doing, right? All right. So then I'll try to look at the question holistically because I know that it is a GMAT relevant question. I know that I can do it in, within two minutes. All right. So then I say this thing, whatever this thing is, I don't know. It is between 0 0.2 to point, uh, 0 0.02 to 0 0.021. All right. So then, and uh, let me say that this x minus root 10 is 0 0.0205, right in the middle. Yeah. This is 0 0.020. So, you know, this is 0 0.0200, 0, whatever. And then I have a 0 0.021. So I have gone in the middle and I've said that x minus root 10 is equal to 0 0.0205. Yeah. All right. So then what is my x? Look, I have to find the value of this. And I don't know x. I'll have to substitute some value for x, right? What I am given is that we are looking for a close value, not the exact value. Great. And that, look at my options, they are really far apart. Look, each one of these options is really far apart because I have a 0.2. To get a 0 0.02, I have divided this by 10. And if I think about the number 0.2, it's such a small number. When I'm dividing it by 10, I'm making it so much smaller, right? So then these two are not close to each other. They're very far apart. Similarly, these two also, relatively speaking, 
these two are also very far apart, right? So the options are far apart, it is closest to, and I don't know how to do it in any other way. In case I were to do it by like some really logical or whatever method, I don't know what to do over here, right? So I'm just going to then approximate. I'll approximate some value of x, okay? So then I say x is equal to root 10 plus 0 0.0205. Because 0 0.0205 will be much smaller than root 10, but I can't really make it equal to root 10, right? This will just go to zero in that case, the entire thing. So then I have to take this little bit as well, all right? Now, 1 upon root 10 minus 1 upon x. This I need to find the value of this. So I'll say this is also root 10 plus 0 0.0205. Yeah. Okay. Now there is a subtraction in between and that is why I'm a little happy with it because I know that this root 10, root 10 will get cancelled when I carry out this uh, operation. Right. When I take the LCM and I so then let me try doing that and I'll see what happens because there is really nothing else that I can think of as of now. So I say this is root 10 plus 0 0.0205 minus root 10 upon. Basically, I'm carrying out the, uh, the subtraction right now. And root 10 into root 10 plus 0 0.0205. Is that okay? If, if I'm subtracting two fractions, then this is what I've got. So this gets cancelled, which I could see because there was a subtraction and that is why I was pretty thrilled about it. Okay, so I get a 0 0.0205 in the numerator or whatever. I mean, it could be anything ranging from here to here. I've just taken it as a reference value. Upon, so root 10 into root 10, perfect. I get a 10, great. Plus, there is a root 10 into 0 0.0205. Now, my problem is what do I do with this? Yeah. But this is where our approximation comes in handy. This root 10, what is this equal to? We said that we know root 9 is 3. So, root 10 is going to be something like 3.1, something like that. Right. Now, 3.1, I am multiplying by a 0 0.0205. Look, what happens when I multiply a number by a very, very small number? Again, now this we have, we have come in the zone of number properties, yeah? What happens? The number becomes very small itself, right? When I multiply a number with a very small, very tiny, let's say if I'm, I'm multiplying this by 0 0.02, it has become, you know, when I get my answer, if I multiply this by two and I get a six, and for example, I, you know, I have one decimal to the left here and I have two decimals, I'm just assuming this to be 0 0.02. So then I have three decimals to the left. So essentially one, two, and then three. So this entire thing, when I multiply a 3.1 or a three with a very small number, the number becomes, the result becomes very small because I have multiplied it with an extremely small number, right? All right, so then my this part has become 0 0.0 something, very, very small, and I have a 10 over here. Now, compared to 10, this 0 0.062, for example, is really small, so I can ignore it, yeah? Then essentially, what have I got? I've got a 0 0.0205 divided by 10. 10.06, but then I'm just, I can approximate that much because I'm looking for closest to, right? And I know that each one of these is divided further by 10 to get the other option. So uh, the, the options are pretty far apart. So I have, I'm dividing this by 10. What do I get there? I get a 0 0.00205. And of course, this is closest to what? 0 0.002, right? This could be a 0, 05 or it could be a 0, 01 or a 0, 07, doesn't matter. And that is why the question says is closest to the value of, because we can't find the exact value of this because there is a range of values that X can take. And that is why it is looking for the closest value, which is always going to be 0 0.002. And that is why the options are really far apart as well. Right? So here our answer is going to be. Thank you.